OK, this problem involves both the factor theorem and the remainder theorem. The polynomial f of x has a factor of x plus 3. OK, so just reading that top line, we can say that f of minus 3 will be equal to 0. OK, and from that bit of information, we can then form an equation. So minus 3 substituted in, so we're going to get minus 3 cubed, so minus 27, plus px cubed, so p lots of minus 3 cubed, so that's 9p. Minus 4 times minus 3 is plus 12, and then you've got plus q, and that's going to have to be equal to 0. OK, so that is the first equation. Now, I'm going to tidy this up so that we have 9p plus q, and I'm going to put minus 27 and 12 together. So minus 27 plus 12 will give me minus 15, and add the 15 to both sides, OK? So move it over to the other side. So this gives me the first equation. Now I'm going to read the second line. When f of x is divided by x minus 1, the remainder is 4. So we're told that f of 1 is going to be equal to 4. So substituting in 1, I get 1 cubed, which is 1, plus p lots of 1 squared, so just p, take away 4 lots of 1, so minus 4, plus q, and that's going to be equal to 4. So if I simplify this, I have p plus q, 1 take away 4 is minus 3, add the 3 to both sides, we get 7. And this is equation number 2. So we now have two simultaneous equations with two unknowns. So to find out what p and q are, I'm going to do equation 1 take away equation 2, and that will eliminate the q's. So I get 9p take away p is 8p, Q take away Q is 0. 15 take away 7 is 8. So 8P is equal to 8, and so P must be equal to 1. I can then substitute that into one of the two equations. That was the easiest. So 1 plus Q is 7, and so Q must be 6. And that gives me the value of P and the value of Q, which is what I wanted. OK, so that's how we can use the factor theorem and the remainder theorem to set up a pair of simultaneous equations in this case.